All right, I would like you to download this um, Excel file and uh, work on um, the problem step by step with me. And your assignment uh, today is to uh, turn in your finished Excel table. Okay, so now we're going to review uh, the um, social accounting matrix. And uh, you can see that um, this is one example. We have three industries here agriculture, manufacturing, and services. And you can see that the three by three matrix over here that's the I.O. model, input output model. And uh, for social accounting matrices, we add uh, a few more items here. We have factors, institutions, and others in this particular example. Now, one thing we want to check um, is that we'll make sure the total input uh, for each particular industry equals the total output or the final demand. So, so for this table, we're going to try to find out the column sum for particular column here. So we'll use equal sign, okay, sum, and parenthesis, you're going to highlight all the elements within the same column. Okay, let's see 11, and similarly you can do equal sum, I'll drag it down, parenthesis back. Now in Excel, actually there's a shortcut. Um, if you click on any cell that has a mathematic function, and you, uh, you go to the lower right side, there's a plus sign, you can just drag it all the way to the end. You will find out that Excel has a memory. Well, memory uh, will memorize the function. And as you move one cell to the right, and all the cells uh, will be moved to the right. So the 16 actually is a summation of all these guys over here. And 13, 12, and 20. Okay. Now let's check the summation of each row here. Again, we're going to use equal sum, parenthesis, and then we're going to highlight all the elements right here, all the way from B4 to uh, G5. And this is 11. You can see that this final demand output is the same as the total input here for agriculture, right? And again, uh, to use the shortcut, you go to the lower right, there's a plus sign, drag it all the way down. All right. And in this way, you can check to make sure that the column sum for each particular category equals the, uh, the summation of all the elements within a particular row. The first step is to create a standardized transaction table. Um, this is exactly the same as what we did with the I.O. model. So the value of each element within a standardized transaction table is the value from the transaction table divided by the, um, the summation of the column elements here. So for agricultural, um, this is the 1-1. One, one. This equals, you find the original value. So make sure you, you go to the cell and highlight the cell, okay, divided by uh, the summation here. Make sure uh, that for the denominator you press F4 so that uh, you get the two dollar signs um, here in order to fix its position every time you move it, you move down, you move down, okay, for the denominator. So press enter, so this is the value here, then you can actually drag it down. So this will give you and the corresponding value of element divided by the fixed denominator. So why don't you go ahead and finish the rest of the table. Alright, the next step in task 2 is to create an identity matrix. So that's very easy. We we'll just make sure that all the elements on the right diagonal have the value of 1 and the rest of elements have value of 0. So please go ahead and finish this trend, uh, identity uh, matrix. Okay, once you determine, have determined this identity matrix, then we can find out the standardized I minus A. It's also very um, easy to calculate. Make sure you highlight all the elements within um, this matrix, and use equal, equal sign, then use I, make sure you select all the elements within I, minus all the elements within A. Now remember, this is a matrix calculation, so in Excel, you have to press Control, Shift, and Enter at the same time. So here is I minus A. The next step is to create the inverse of I minus A. Um, that's also very simple in Excel by using the M inverse function. 
So highlight all the unknown cells equals M inverse. Then make sure you select all the elements within I minus A. And you press Control Shift Enter at the same time. So let's give you I'll uh, give you the inverse of I minus A. Now let's try to um, gain a deeper understanding of this inverse of I minus A. And you can see that all these are positive values, okay? And you can see that uh, it comes from I the inverse of I minus A. So how do we interpret all the elements here? So if you look at the first column. Uh, in the identity matrix, I from agriculture to agriculture, that's one, okay? So the mathematical symbolic meaning is that if you increase the um, input of agriculture by one unit while keeping other industries the same level as they are right now, then you will see the impact on different industries like here. Okay, so let's try to explain that. So if the agricultural sector produces one more unit of products, so then the direct and indirect impact is, so typically we look at the, the, imp, the, um, the impact on the industry itself, that's a direct impact. And the impact on other industries, we call it indirect impact. So in this particular uh, question, is, it asks you what is the total effect in terms of direct and indirect impact. So this is going to be equal sign the summation of this guy here, 1.84, which is uh, impact on agricultural industry itself, plus manufacturing, plus services. Right? This is a very simplified scenario where we only have three industries. So the in total in direct and in indirect impact is this one. Okay, 4.75. So you can see that it's big. It's a big deal. If we increase uh, the agricultural's output by one, um, then uh, uh, you will get a direct and indirect impact of 4.75 units. So the induced impact actually is we're looking at the uh, social uh, accounts. Uh, including factors, institutions, etc. So in this particular example, we only include uh, factors and institutions. So this is going to be um, the summation of factors and institutions. So that's the induced impact. Okay, we ignore the the others, the kind of rest of world impact. We only look at uh, this uh, these particular uh, exam uh, elements we have here. Then the total impact is going to be basically looking at that's a summation of these two. Right? So 8.1 units. Does it make sense? Alright, let's let's work on another um, problem. If the manufacturing sector produces one more unit, so then we're looking at the second. This should be zero. So if the manufacturing sector produces one more unit, so then actually we're looking at this column right here, okay, the second one. So you can probably figure this out, the direct indirect impact. We're looking at the impacts on different industries, right? So equals this one here plus this guy plus this one. That's a direct indirect impact. Then induced impact. In this particular case is summation of factors and institutions. Then the total impact is going to add up these two. 8.75. Okay, it's a big deal. Now I want you to try the last problem by yourself. The direct and indirect impact is summation. We're looking at this guy here from here to here. Then induced impact, we're looking at factors and institution. Then the total impact is going to be the 
the summation of these two. So that's a total impact. So overall, um, in summary, the direct indirect impact will, um, refers to all the impacts on different industries here. All right, let's look at task number five. So here we have a new policy. Um, under this new policy, we're going to stimulate the service in industry by 0.2 units and stimulate the manufacturing industry by 0.1 units. So what are impacts on all accounts? So remember, uh, in I.O. model, we talk about delta Y, right? Delta Y is a matrix. Uh, uh, it's a column matrix. And make sure that the order of the accounts is the same as what you prepared in, in, in the uh, A matrix, okay? So in this particular case, I'll increase the service industry by 0 0.2 and manufacturing by 0 0.1, while all others um, stay the same. So for agricultural, uh, 0, right, stays the same. And if we look at the manufacturing, uh, this is going to be 0 0.2. Oh, sorry, 0 0.1 and service 0 0.2 factors and institutions 0. Okay, uh, that's my policy. I want to find out what are impacts on all accounts. So remember, equation the inverse of i minus a times delta y times all y equals delta x. Right, the change of x uh, total, so this should be delta x, the change of uh, input for different industries. So this is a matrix multiplication, right? So we're going to select all the five, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, select all the five elements within the same column. So equals, we're going to use a matrix multiplication, so m M U L T. Okay. Parenthesis, now we're going to highlight the inverse of I minus A. That's my first matrix. And second one, I'll be using this column. Okay. Parenthesis, then you press Control Shift Enter at the same time. And you can see that that's the impacts on all accounts. So what it means is um, these are the inputs from different industries they need to produce, okay, in, or, uh, in order to, you know, achieve this outcome. And you can see that from here to here, these are the agricultural manufacturing through uh, services, and that's the direct and indirect impacts, right, out, um, out of um, this policy. The summation of these two is the induced effect um, out of this policy. So why don't you go through this problem again all by yourself without uh, following my listening to, to my video and see if you can complete this Excel sheet by yourself. And after you complete that, uh, you s submit this uh, complete Excel sheet um, under the assignment tab.